Hi, I'm Colin from Tank Valley Motorhomes and this is the Hanover of a 2015 Hobby Siesta T65. So as I start the walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first, your habitation door is operated by the Hobby Habitation key. So you can open it to the back, close it to the front and lock the door with the key. You've got your fridge vents, your awning which I'll show you on collection as it's a bit windy today, we don't want to damage it. Gas locker, so LPG, liquid petroleum gas. That is the lock closed, what you've got to do is pop the key in, give it a turn, then turn the whole lock face and in here you've got space for two bottles. So this is our six kilogram test bottle that's on the vehicle at the moment to test your gas appliance. So what you do is you put the bottle on, you can get one further back, strap round the bottle to secure the bottle. There's two straps, so make sure you put the straps on just to secure it. Hand tighten pigtail, so no need for a spanner. It's left to tighten, right to loosen. So opposite with gas, so hand tighten it on the bottle then turn the cylinder on from the top of the bottle. So always turn it on when you're on site and knock it off before you start driving as it's far safer to have the gas cylinder off when you're on the road. And then when you need your second bottle, if you are carrying one, you just unscrew and connect to your other bottle as this bottle will be empty. That's why you carry a spare. And then always making sure just when I'm in here, there's a crush valve just up here. This little middle bit will come out. If that ever pushes out, just push it back in because that's just your crush valve and it'll stop the gas from going from the bottle into the vehicle. Garage on the back of the vehicle. So you do have your carpets, your cab carpets, your on and winding handle. Lights are individually switched, which is gonna switch on the side here. So if when the power's on, you'll be able to turn the light on for in the garage. Tethering points in the garage, so you've got them along the front and along the back. And it is heated via the flap for the heater. So it's always warm in here once you've got the heating on. It keeps the draft out of the garage. On the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light, nothing really on the back. Come round, you've got your other smaller door access to the garage. You do have your boiler in the garage. So your boiler holds 10 litres of water at any one time. In the winter, it's very important that you drain this off because the vehicle will get cold, the water could freeze in the boiler when we go to freezing temperatures overnight. So what this does, this is called a Truma frost control valve and at 3 degrees this will push the button out and it will drop the water out underneath the vehicle. That 10 litres water will drain directly out underneath the vehicle. Don't always rely on this valve because it ever becomes faulty and you think, oh, the motorhome's gonna do it for us, it's automatic. And it doesn't, you're gonna be in for an expensive repair bill. So what I would do is, when the diamond's from across the vehicle and the button's pushed in, this is holding water. Turn it front to back, little nib comes up. That is the boiler open. It now can't hold the water. It's draining the water off as we speak underneath the van. Leave it open if you're putting it into storage, if you're standing on the drive and you're not using it. When you come to reuse it, turn it, push the button in, that's a closed. Then you would go back into the vehicle because you'll have opened all your taps throughout the vehicle. You want to shut them. You want to shut your fresh tap and your waste. And then you want to put water in the vehicle via a hose pipe. Fill the vehicle with water, 
put the pump on, go to the cold side of the tap first, you'll get an automatic flow of cold water because it's transferring it from the tank underneath the van to the tap. Go to the hot, then it's transferring it from the freshwater tank into here, then to the tap, so it's like three stages. That's why you're gonna let it, a lot of air and, com and compression through the tap until you get a free flow of water. This is when you know that your system is primed, but please drain these off because they're not covered under warranty. So to do so, you just turn them, turn this, let the button pop out, the shut, turn the diamond back and push the button back in. But you want to make sure that's drained off so that you, you don't get an expensive repair bill and it is always safe to leave it with no water in the winter. As you see, the boiler's here, so that's just a vent when operating on gas, allow the gas fumes out. This is your waste water. And then you turn the handle here. So drive over the grid, on the way out of your sight, turn the handle. And it'll drain off the wastewater there and then you've got a cap for it to go on making sure that this is fully drained off in the winter again you don't want any water freezing the tanks below the chassis and then you've got your fresh water drain which is this one here in the cassette locker so again you want to drain that one off further back You've got your cassette. So to operate your toilet, you've got a cassette which everything goes into the cassette. Obviously you'll need to empty this. So making sure that the blade isn't closed. Is closed, sorry. If it was open, it won't come out. It needs to be closed because the mechanism will be engaged. Pull the orange handle up, slide it out. Carry it to the waste disposal point. Take the yellow cap off. Press the yellow button tip it out once you've tipped it out there's normally a tap pop a bit of water in give it a bit of a rinse tip out again and then you want to go in with a cap full 120 mil if you've got a green or the blue into here see what your sites want you to use when booking the sites and when checking in some sites prefer to use the green now and then you can pop that back into the vehicle and it's good to be used Fresh water intake, so this is how you fill the vehicle with fresh water. Mind you, don't drink this water unless you're boiling it. If you're drinking cold water, buy bottled water because you don't know where you're getting your water from. So carry a hose pipe with some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap. Take the cover off, flat end of the hose pipe into there and wait until it either overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board, which you can see on the main control panel inside the vehicle mains connection so to hook the vehicle up if you are charging it at home or on site get your hooker blade lift the collar slide it on here slide the put on the vehicle first then the site post or the garage at home to charge and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead in your hand Diesel fill on the passenger door with the opens with the main ignition key so you can fill with diesel fuel. Tire pressures, five bar on the front, which is 72.3 psi, five and a half bar on the back, which is 79.5 psi. This is where you can find your tire pressures beside your passenger door. Engine batteries underneath this floor, so you've got to lift this compartment in the cab floor to get access to the engine battery if you want to replenish it, recharge it, do anything with it, it's under there, disconnect it. And then you've got a toolkit underneath the passenger seat, which includes a jack and a brace and a tow eye. Bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard, and you've got your gel kit in here, so that's a tyre inflation kit, compressor in the gel pack.
Under the bonnet, you've got your screen wash, which is the main one you're going to need, followed by your power steering fluid, your brake flu fluid, and your coolant. Oil filler and dipstick, and then should you need to jump start the vehicle, you'd earth off the bulb to the bottom of the headlight. Lift this cover up by your air filter and pop your positive terminal on there for giving or receiving a jump start. Beside the handbrake, near the driver's seat, if you open the door, you've got a isolation key for the leisure, leisure battery. So if you are standing it, you can turn it off so that you get your no power drains or you can turn it on. But make sure it's turned on when you're using the vehicle, otherwise you'll have no 12 volt. But if you're standing it, you may want to turn it off to stop that power drain if you think you've got one. To operate the hobby control panel, so above the door, you've got your 12 volt control panel. So as you can see there, it's got a picture of a hookup, which means we are receiving 230 mains voltage. So all your household appliances will work via your three pin sockets. You can turn on and off here, so that's it off. Press and hold the red button in the center, turn the back on, it'll play your little tune, which means it's come on. And then you've got the buttons around the red dial. So you've got 12 volt, which you need for your lights, your ignition on your fridge, hob, and various other pump, all takes 12 volt, so turn your 12 volt on. You've got the lights, and then you've got the music icon, which turns on the head unit and the cab, so when you're parked up, it uses off the leisure battery, instead of using the van battery. So if you like a bit of morning radio, you can turn that on, and use the radio in the cab off the leisure battery. Water, so it tells you you've got 80% of fresh water on board. Battery, first one that looks like a trailer is your leisure battery reading. Press it again, you get the picture of the truck. This is the van battery reading. And then you get the internal temperature and external temperature. There's a little control here as well which does your lights, so you can turn it on and press each individual one because you see them coming on and off there and it's all controlled via here which light does which, you've got your washroom, you've got your main light in, the, in here, you've got your bedroom, reading lamps, one and two, you've got your Kitchen lights, which is the second row, the spotlights, lounge lights, and washroom lights, all from there. To operate your heating in hot water, it's off the Truma CP digital control panel. So you do a long press, which turns it completely off, and a long press to turn it on. This is the menu, this is standby, it's on, but you want to get into the menu, you press enter. And you'll see there you've got a motorhome with a thermometer flashing in the top left hand corner. It's off the heating or it's on all the way to 30 degrees. So you can choose your temperature of the thermostat and then press enter. And that'll preset the thermostat to 30 degrees which is this thing here. Then you've got your water. So as long as your boiler is closed and you've got water on board, you can have it on 40 or 60 degrees. And then you've got another setting which is boost, which will turn off the heating to prioritize the water. So for this we'll just say you want 60 degrees of hot water. Which energy source, you've got a picture of a gas bottle and some electricity symbol. This is what source you want. So whether you're using gas, if you were wild camping, because you'd have no other energy source available. Mix one is 750 watts of electric and gas. Mix two is 1500 watts of electric and gas. You'd use this more so in the winter. If you're in desperate need to heat the vehicle or heat the water, use both sources together, which will drastically reduce the time it takes to heat the water or the vehicle. And then you would turn it off and put it back onto electric. So you've got EL1, 750 watts of electric. And EL2, which is 1500 watts of electric. So normally if you're on a site, you'd use EL2. 
but if you're abroad on a smaller CL or on an air you may have to use electric on one kilowatt which is 750 watts so for this we'll just say mix two because we've got a gas bottle on and we've got electric on so we may as well use both and drastically take the time it takes to heat the water and the vehicle down to a minimum fan so eco high is just a 12 volt assisted fan eco obviously takes a smaller feed high takes a uses a lot more power to blow the air around the vehicle eco is quieter on an evening as well if you're going to sleep with it on put it on eco timer so you can time it to come on and off just the once though clocks on the main display panel and then you've got a spanner so you can go to reset press enter if you get a warning triangle it says preset press enter and it's going to restart this control panel so you'll have to go in and set the temperature the water the energy source and the fan speed all again and then to turn off press and hold and it'll turn the system completely off on the side of the kitchen you've got your electric step in and out switch a 230 volt socket but most of all this little switch that's unknown is your pump switch so you've got to put that on to pressurize the water to the taps toilet and shower otherwise you'll get nothing out the tap like we've got now but as soon as i press the pump the water starts coming out the tap so that is your pump sure flow 12 volt pump that's on the vehicle to pressurize the taps toilet and shower in the kitchen area you've got three gas burners like so so once you've had these on allow them to cool before putting the glass laid down because they are meant to be anti-shatter but i've seen them shatter so do be careful and then if you've got your pump on you'll be able to use your tap which as you see i've just had the boiler open so this is what it'll do it'll purge the water through there so it's not a consistent flow but if i take it to the As you see now, it's getting a little bit better. It's pressurizing itself there now, it's purging until you get a free flow of water. Then you can start heating the water up. So this is when you know your boiler's full, when you get the pressurized flow. Push the handles, the catch is behind the handles and you've got storage in the top there. Cut the drawer gas isolation tap so these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced the technician will test that the gas appliances are working to the correct standard set any problems for you using the gas and you think you might have a gas leak turn the bottle off to be safe it's far easier to turn the bottle off and be safe than have a gas leak and potentially hurt yourselves or end up in hospital when you're away that's not what you want with gas poisoning so you can use them to isolate each appliance, but just turn the bottle off. Storage, pushing the catches in, lock them, another storage drawer, and a larger storage drawer. That's all in the kitchen. To operate the Dometic oven, put your light here, push this little tab up and open the door. And then all you need to do is push and hold and the oven light and that is your mini oven so to operate the Dometic fridge freezer so this is your energy source selector on the left at the top at position 12 o'clock is off that means the fridge is not on you can turn it off when you're parked up and you're not using the vehicle at position 2 o'clock you do have mains hook up so that is a 230 volt main supply which will act as a household fridge so if you are lucky enough to keep this at home and you are pre-chilling the fridge a couple of days beforehand not only have you hooked the vehicle up and it gives the leisure battery time to charge before you trip away it gives the fridge time to cool down before the day before you put stuff in leave it overnight and chill that and then you want to travel and you want to keep the temperature of the fridge the same so you'd use 
hook up mains power if you want a site or you are pre chilling the fridge at home like i say put the shopping in the night before allow that to chill and then you want to go the next setting which is at four o'clock which is this one here which is the battery setting so the battery setting is off the engine alternator when the engine is running there's a feed sent to the fridge which keeps it as a cool box so that's why i say pre chill it beforehand allow your shopping to get cold don't just put it in and expect it to be cold when you get to the site. It will only keep the temperature that it was currently at. It'll get no warmer, but no cooler. But it'll make sure that all your shopping in your fridge is nice and edible when you're traveling in the summer until you either go back to main hook up on your site or you go all the way down to six o'clock, which is the gas if you're wild camping. This is your energy. This is your temperature source, should I say. So all the way at the top is full bar. Once you put your shopping in, just drop it down. Once you pre chill and have it on full, drop that down, push the spark igniter in, which is your piezo ignition. And you want this orange band to go into the green. Once it's in the green, the fridge is lit. And then when you're not using it, we always recommend leaving the door open because you don't want to get any smells in the vehicle with the air being trapped in the fridge. So press here, pull these two out and rest the door against it. And obviously the air is allowed to circulate in and out of the fridge. So at the back of the vehicle, you've got two single beds up above a garage. Trip switches in here for mains electric. So if you trip the vehicle out, try your trips in here before you try your site. Nothing in this one. Storage. The light in the corner. And the hanging rail in this corner. So that's your wardrobe. Storage. Storage. Storage above the bed. A mains 230 volt socket and two USBs on there, but you've got to be hooked up for that to work. And then you do have this little hobby switch here. So this is your light switch. So you've got this one here. So if you press it, it does this light on and off, which is your reader light. It does have an individual switch on the unit itself. And that one, which does this side reading light. And then you've got the bottom one, which turns on and off the kitchen light. So if you want to get up for a wee in the middle of the night and you're frightened you're gonna fall down them stairs after one too many beers. Pop the light on and you'll see your way at the toilet. So to operate the toilet, make sure that the pump is on and you'll be able to press the blue button to get your fresh water flush on the toilet, which is this button here. Always put a bit of water in the toilet first to lubricate the seal. And then this grey handle here is what's known as your blade handle. So this is this is what engages the mechanism. So push it away from you. Use the toilet with the blade open. Flush after use and then slide this back to the right. Which then when the cassette is full, the person will get a light on here. Which shows, that, shows the person emptying the toilet which indicates that the cassette is full. I've got a light here, toiletry racks, shower, 
show a hose, we always recommend disconnecting the hose from the head when winterizing because then you want a good coil up there and line it in the shower tray with the mixer tap open and then you skylight, you push this in, pull it back for ventilation and you've got a blackout blind and a fly screen. But always make sure that all your flies, all your skylights and your windows are closed before travel. So to use the table as a bed, first of all to get the table off, there's two little white toggles on the top. Push them in and then you'll be able to grab the table, lift it off, pull one of your legs off and then pop the table on the bottom bar. That's formed the base of the bed. Backrest cushion into there. And then what you want to do is you want to pull the car seat round. And there you've created a single bed at the front. Underneath the driver's cab seat is the location of where your 12 volt fuse board is. So do carry some spare fuses and you can replenish them should the fuse blow, which you can get from most local car factors or online and just carry them just in case a fuse blows you can replenish the fuse and you do have your location of your leisure battery under here as well so if you ever needed to change the leisure battery it's four torx bits on the runners of the seats two at the front two at the back lift the seat out and you'll get access to the leisure battery so now in the cab to the right of the driver between the driver's seat and the door is the location of your handbrake just here and then on the door you do have driver and passenger electric windows and then you've got a joystick so you can choose which mirror you want as they all are electrically operated and you've got two mirrors each side so you've got the big mirror and the bottom mirror being the blind spot mirror to adjust from here from inside of the cab and then to black out the driver's door and the passenger's door with the remis cab lines pinch and slide and you can black out the door cards if you are leaving it in storage, parked on the drive and you didn't want anyone to see inside it or on an evening on site when you're away in the van. Same for the windscreen, pinch and slide, pinch and slide, like so. Headlight adjustment here, trip computer on the end of the wiper stalk which goes through your average and instant consumption, your traveling time, your distance traveled, and your range of fuel in the fuel tank. So it'll tell you how many miles you've got in the fuel tank. Lights and indicators, cruise control. So turn it on, you'll get the green light in the bottom of the rev count, it'll say cruise on. Get your desired speed, push up to set, push up to speed up, pull down to slow down. Cancel with the foot brake on the end of the stalk and then press the end of the stalk again and it will resume to the last speed it was set at before the engine was turned off. Six speed manual gearbox with lift the collar into reverse and that is the vehicle in reverse. Heated mirrors, rear fog lights, hazard lights, locks the cab doors, ESR off is just another word for anti-slip relief and if you're stuck on wet grass if you turn that off you can then give the vehicle a little bit more gas to get it off that wet grass pitch without the ESP and the anti-slip braking kicking in. On and off with the aircon, fan speed here, temperature on this one this distributions whether you want it to the footwell, to the face, or to the screen, all on there. And then whether you're demaxing, recirculating, or pressing for the aircon on here. 
full aircon, full auto, so it'll do its own thing on full auto, so it'll adjust to the temperature that it thinks it needs to be in the cab. But you can also adjust that there. Kenwood radio, so on and off here. That's it off, that's it on. You've got an auxiliary, 3.5 mil auxiliary and a CD. So you wanna press SRC, it'll go to the tuner, which is FM, press search for your favorite channels, press one to six to save your favorite radio stations, or put a CD in, or press again, and it'll go to auxiliary, which is a 3.5 milli jack. And then press and hold to turn off. Lockable center glove bin with the main key. Another glove bin, another glove box which is heated and cooled via the air conditioning. And then to turn your seats, using these little handles here, you'll be able to turn them. If it was to get stuck, just pull the seat forward and spin it round and that's the same for the passenger and the driver's seat. But make sure you hear that positive click and that is the seat locked in place.